What's going on guys, it's Jono, and today we're gonna to be covering how you can use artificial intelligence to automatically respond to every single email that you're currently receiving through Gmail. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, let's dive into it right now. So in front of me, I'm using Zapier, and I built out this workflow which allows you to essentially automatically respond to a client. Now, at a high level, essentially what's going on here is when an email comes through, and don't worry, we're actually gonna be building this out together and going through it step by step, but when an email comes through Zapier, what we're gonna do is we're going to grab the text from that email and we're going to automatically respond to that email, right? So we're gonna generate using artificial intelligence through the uh, chat GPT extension, we're gonna generate a response, right? And then once we generate that response, what's gonna happen is we're going to automatically classified into one of two categories on this second step. So this is more like a uh, filter step, if you will. So I'll just change this over to filter. We're going to ask GPT again. We're gonna send another prompt saying, hey, does this sound like a email that we can send to a client? Respond yes if you feel confident sending this and respond to if you don't feel confident sending this. And depending on the response that you get, if it's a one and if it's good to go, then we're gonna send the email automatically. Perfect. And then if it isn't confident in its own ability to generate a response, then what we'll do is we'll create a draft email so that when you log into your Gmail, you'll see the draft already populated and you have pretty much a fully complete email ready to go immediately. All you have to do is just make a couple modifications and it is good to fricking go. <laughs> awesome. That is how you can save so much fricking time by writing emails, right? Because obviously, you know, if you're getting swamped in emails, it's, it's just, it's overwhelming. It's a huge waste of time if you can just get AI to do it. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's build this. So in front me I have this landscaping inqu inquiry that I just sent to myself. It says, hello, I'm looking for a landscaper to trim my hedges. Can you help? Very original, very amazing message. You can, you know, modify this to whatever industry that you want. I just chose landscaping for this example and we're going to create a response to this automatically. Okay, so in Zapier we're going to create a new zap and the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the trigger is Gmail, right? So when an incoming email, right? When we receive an incoming email, we essentially want to fire this zap. Now in, um, in Zapier, there's triggers and actions. Triggers is just a fancy way of saying, hey, it's gonna start an automated sequence and then actions are the particular actions that you want to happen after something has been started, right? So email comes in, that's the trigger. When the email comes in, we're gonna automatically generate a response and then send it back to the person that emailed us in the first place. Okay. Awesome. So the first thing is uh, in Gmail, we have the event. Now you can choose one of two options here. You can either choose new email or new email matching search. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose new email matching search. And the reason why I want to do that is because um, the issue is, is that you're probably going to get bombarded by like 10 you know, maybe thousands <laughs> of emails all the time, right? And it's better to kind of narrow it down a bit so that um, with this particular automation, maybe you're only responding to a certain segment of the emails you get. So for example, maybe you wanna have this automation for new leads, or maybe you wanna have this automation for responding to particular customers, right? Maybe it's when you get a review, or maybe it's when they sign the contract or whatever it may be. Um, it, you know, it's just gonna give you a little bit more granularity over it. So in this instance, what we could do is we could have a thread that is, you know, for example, taking landscaping inquiry. So let's say that you have a thread that's existing and you sent out an email to every single new lead um, that has the uh, search query landscaping inquiry, right? And then they reply back to that thread right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to reply back to them once they reply back to the thread, right? So that's kind of what we can do here. But of course, you can just choose any email and all you'd have to do is go up to the app and event and choose um, the email and it's just going to fire off on everything, right? Okay, perfect. So we have effectively set up the trigger and we're going to go back over to the test area here and we can see um, all of the information from that particular email. So it says, hey, I'm looking for a landscaper to trim my hedges. Can you help best Jono? Okay, perfect. Step number one is officially completed. 
on to step number two. <laughs> okay, cool. We're gonna uh, select ChatGPT here and uh, you're gonna have to select your account. Now, when you select your account, just make sure that you actually have a credit balance in it because if you don't have a credit balance in it, then it's not gonna work. You're also gonna have to get your API key from over here, just generate one and then you can plug it into Zapier and you're good to go. Um, otherwise, you're gonna run into errors Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna choose the, um, the prompt here. We're gonna choose conversation with an assistant. Okay, we can go ahead and we can continue here and we have our account and here is the message that we're gonna be replying to, right? So it says in the message box, what essentially we wanna do is just give the prompt to ChatGPT to say, hey, reply to this email and then colon space and then we're gonna drag in the uh, content of the email here. So uh, we'll just select body plane and that's gonna essentially pull in this email here. So it's gonna pull in everything from here so that we can use uh, in this message box and we're just gonna reply to that email. Now, if we go ahead and we were just to, you know, essentially use that only, it's probably not gonna work that well. And the reason it's not gonna work that well, and I'll just test it so you guys can actually see it here, is that it's going to use all the custom variables. So it'll be like, you know, in your email signature, it'll be like best um, company name, best full name, best phone number, best email, right? And we don't wanna be sending an email back uh, <laughs> to a customer being like best regards your name. Nothing screams automation, or artificial intelligence more than a templated response that says your name and you don't even fill in your name. <laughs> so you wanna avoid that at all costs. And how we can do that is by going back into the um, actions here and selecting assistant name and instructions. So I'm just gonna say context here. And in the context, we essentially just wanna give a couple variables. Um, this is where you can train the AI. You can give it additional information that it should probably respond uh, that, that it should incorporate into the email. So for example, um, this is a response to a client uh, inquiring, oops, inquire, oops, inquiring about landscaping services. Please make sure to not reply with any custom variables such as your name instead replace the custom variables with the following information and you can be like name equals i'm just going to use my own name here um, company equals abc company phone number equals 1-800-1111 okay so on and an email equals john at abc company dot com okay perfect so we can give um, information to the prompt that it can now use in the response back to this email, you can add in really anything you want here. Now, the, the idea is, is the first time you program this email, you're probably not gonna get it right the first time, right? So you gotta come back and iterate over it um, until you add in as much context so that you remove any outliers, you remove any reason why the response may be failing, right? And we'll kind of get into that later in this video. Okay, awesome. So we have all of the information, it's good to go. Now we can go ahead and click continue and then we can retest the step and let's see if it gets rid of this, um, gets rid of that uh, custom variable there. Okay, so we're gonna scroll down and it just says best regards, ABC company, right? So there we go. It says you can give us a call at our phone number, which we plugged in here. You know, you can call us or you can email us at abccompany.com, John at ABC company and all of that kind of stuff, right? So that's kind of nice, right? Um, so that we have everything there um, all in one place. Right? And you can just kind of train that over time. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add another step and we want to essentially filter out whether or not we feel comfortable actually sending this message over to a client, right? Because the last thing we wanna do is just send out any message <laughs> that it generates that's scary, right? I don't wanna do that. I'm sure you don't wanna do that either. Um, so we can just once again have ChatGPT just analyze the message it created and then use its own intelligence uh, to determine whether it's a good fit to send or not. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, choose conversation as the event, and 
in this instance, uh, we're going to use the user message here. We're going to put in um, the full response down here, right? So full response, we're just essentially passing the output of what it, it wrote here, right, as the full response here. Okay, and you can kind of see the output here. If we just click load more, there's the whole email that it generated. Awesome. And then essentially, the only thing that I would want to do here is just um, put in the memory key. So we can put in the thread ID here, just so that it remembers what the messages were in the past, because what's going to happen is if you set this up, right, um, essentially you have an email coming in, right? And when that email comes in, you're going to reply to it. Maybe the client replies back and then the AI replies and it continues replying, right? But you need a memory key to store the entire thread of that message. And essentially that field right here, the memory key is where that thread is going to be stored. So it has all the context of the entire conversation you had with that client, which is really important. We're actually going to go ahead and add that in here in the actions too. Um, so in the model, I'm just going to go ahead and choose GPT 3.5 turbo and Let's see. Okay. And conversation ID. What we can do is we can just put the thread ID of this email so that this email thread here, no matter how many different messages there are, it's still going to be on the same thread. So we can just use that as, as context. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and we're gonna go back to step three here. We have the memory key, we have the user message, and then all we wanna do is just essentially make sure that we have an assistant here and we're giving it context as to how to filter this out. Okay, so I actually wrote it here just to save some time. We're gonna go ahead and actually just copy this over. Okay, perfect. So here's the instructions. Please analyze this email response. This email response is the user message here. So it's gonna analyze that. If you're fully confident that I can send this out to a client without reviewing it, please respond one. A good reply should make sense. There's no HTML such as, and it's giving an example of what HTML would look like. There's no markdown or custom variables such as company or person, and that it doesn't reference AI or a chatbot. Respond two if we should manually review it. You can click okay, and we're gonna test this step. And we're gonna see the response that ChatGPT uh, provides. It's gonna give a response back to us. Okay, perfect. So the reply is one so that it's good to go. And we can just kind of take a look at the message. It kind of uh, fits all the criteria. Dear Jono, thank you for reaching out to ABC Company regarding your hedge trimming needs. We would need more, we'd be more than happy to assist you with that. Please feel free to give us a call at this or email us at this to discuss details further and schedule a service. Look forward to hearing from you soon. Best regards, ABC Company. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So once again, maybe it's not like the absolute world's best response, but this is where you kind of nurture it over time, right? You have to create the best responses through multiple iterations and how you create the best responses through multiple iterations is once again, going into the actions here and just making sure that this in, uh, assistant instructions is very clear on what you want it to actually say, how you want it to respond. Another thing you can say is please direct, please direct, uh, customers to book an appointment on our widget here. And it could be like HTTPS, abccompany.com slash appointment or whatever your appointment page is. That way it's going to direct that customer to book an appointment on your appointment page. Okay, perfect. Now for the action step, what we need to do is have a path here. So it's going to diverge, right? If it's good, then it'll go down path A. If it's bad, then it's going to go down path B. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set that up. We'll just change the name here. Good to send. Perfect. And the field we're going to choose is going to be the reply here. And if this contains the word or the, the letter one, then we'll continue down this path which it's going to continue down because it did provide a one. And then if it's not good to send or please create a draft, then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure it only continues down this if the reply contains two. And the distinction between these two is really 
In one instance, we send it immediately, and in the other instance, we create a draft so that we can log into our Gmail, review it, and make sure we don't send a message that we'd later regret sending. Okay, so it's not gonna continue down this path because, um, well, it deemed it appropriate to send. Okay, perfect, awesome. So we're gonna set up action number six, and we're gonna go back to the Gmail module, and we're going to uh, reply to an email here. Let me just see. Okay, perfect. And we can go ahead and select the thread ID. So we go into custom here, thread ID, and that's this. Once again, it's just the thread of this general email. And two, we're gonna go, it's, so it's from, we're sending it to the from email, right? So whoever sent this initial email, which is this email here, we're gonna be sending it back to that email. And then you can select your own Gmail, select your name if you want. This doesn't have to be inputted. It's just gonna put the, the defaults from Gmail if you don't. And then the body can be the full response here. So uh, we're gonna search that out, full response. Okay, perfect. Now your reply is good to go. You can add attachments if you want to, um, all of that stuff. We'll test it out. I will see if everything's working. Okay, perfect. It's working. You can see that a new message has appeared and that same message is now sent back to the original inquiry. Okay, perfect. And this can happen over and over and over and over and over again with that same thread ID, right? As long as it matches the subject line, which is landscaping inquiry and it's still on this thread, right? Um, it will continue replying to that customer over and over and over again. And now in the instance that, um, let's say it doesn't pass the filter, right? And the, the email is deemed not appropriate to send. Well, obviously we don't wanna send it. We wanna create a draft, which is still gonna save us a ton of time. And then we can just manually log into our Gmail and then respond to that email. Okay, so let's go ahead and send that, set that up. We're gonna go back, check, uh, or choose Gmail again, and then create a draft reply. Okay, click continue a bunch of times. We're gonna enter in the thread ID again. Okay, and then once again, we're gonna choose the from email to send it to that person and then it's gonna be from me. And we can go ahead and choose the full response. Okay, sweet. And that's pretty much it. You can select the signature that you want here. I'm gonna go ahead and select mine. And then click continue and we'll send that off, right? Test the step and it's officially been tested. Now it's not gonna appear on this, right? Because it hasn't been sent yet. So rather it's gonna be here. We're gonna refresh that. Okay, and here's the response. This is what we sent in the last, uh, you know, uh, test that we did when we were testing the actual email. And now we have the response programmed in here. And all you'd have to do is change whatever you want. So maybe I wanna add my name here and then you can go ahead and send it off. Okay guys, that's essentially how you can automate all of your emails using Zapier and ChatGPT. Hopefully that's gonna save you <laughs> tons of time, many, many hours. If you liked content just like this, please hit the subscribe button down below, it's totally free. And uh, you know, we're, I'm gonna be you know, releasing a lot of other videos just like this one, hit the thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.